What's up? Oh, hi there. Tyler Keith. Plucked off. Yeah. It's the end of 2018. Tis. Cannot fucking believe it. This year went by somehow at the same time really slow, but then also at the same time, wow, it's over. It went by just ridiculously fucking fast to me. Well, it's, it's, it's like a little insane. bit, but my perception of like time and distance is really like fucked up though. So like, when I say that, but like, yeah, it's like, it seems like in some, in some, in some ways of looking at it, I'm like, man, you know, Solo came out a long time ago. And then otherwise, and then other times I'm like, no, no, it didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I feel like we just got, I feel like we just left the, the theater watching Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. Gosh, I wish we could relive that, seeing that just, first time just, again. Just like, though. So good. <laughs> but anyways, we're here to talk about the top TV shows in our favorite TV episodes that we saw this year. Um, of course, this is what we have watched. There's also, so much fucking TV out also there. Also, soups. Subjective. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, I, I love reading this stuff, you know, or, or listening to people talk about this stuff. Just is because, uh, I mean, it's the same with any entertainment but i feel like tv is very fast and yeah you very much kind of watch what you want it, it's easy it's easier to keep up with the biggest movies but it's a lot harder to keep up with the right. biggest and also because tv's just so much more of a time investment yeah i like there's still some shows that i wish i would have watched like uh, apparently the haunting on house hill was really good and i wish i could have yeah. seen that yeah. uh i mean i finally just started using my hulu account so i wish i could have seen castle rock yeah, Castle Rock's really good. I to me, uh, Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's I wish I could have finished that. I am in the midst of watching Orange Is the New Black season six, which is fantastic so far. But and then even though even though I, I can almost guarantee I won't like it, it's almost just like a something in my brain's like I should watch the second season of of Thirteen Reasons Why, and I'm no, like I shouldn't, but I'm like at this in my brain's like you want you you watch the first season. I you watched see what happens. the first four episodes of that season. I was like I can't do this anymore. Can't do it. All right, just cannot do it anymore. Uh, and that show's getting a third season. Yeah. Ah, uh, should have ended with the first man. Whatever. The first one is like maybe on a good yeah. Day, Netflix okay. renews this garbage, but then they cancel fucking Daredevil and stuff. Come on. Because they, because they make all the profits Stupid. from that show. Yeah, it's they because make some of the profit. From it's because Disney. Thirteen Reasons Why is a very bingey show. Yeah, it's a very just like I can just go sit there and watch every episode in one day. But and then, yeah, <laughs> and then and then you're depressed and you're like, exactly. man, that show's not not that good. Anyways, um, but yeah, this is our first um, end of the year list. I mean, we got movies, video games, a lot of music lists as well. There's a whole bunch of shit. Oh, yeah. I like doing the end of the year festivities because we do a lot Day of fun. videos. Day fun. Yeah, exactly. So let's get into it. The top TV shows of 2019 is what I wrote down. That's Did I write wrong. that down, too? I think I might have wrote that down, too. I think I wrote that down, The top TV too. episodes of 2019. I know the future, motherfucker. Ooh. All right, let's get into it with the top TV shows. Let's start TV shows, then we'll drill down into episodes. All right. So I got five. I don't know yeah, how many you have. So yeah. I have uh, five with some honorable mentions. So. Yeah, I'll probably. I, I, I don't have much room for honorable mentions. But uh, number five, I, I put just because I feel like it's one of the better years. I have The Walking Dead. Specifically, not just one season, but I mean like the back half of eight and the first half of nine. I mean, do, no matter what you think of The Walking Dead, you kind of have to agree they are taking some risks this year. I mean, all. Yeah. I mean, with the exception of Judith, all the Grimeses are off the show or dead, and they're just kind of doing whole new things. And uh, the stuff with the Whisperers is cool. And I thought, even though maybe it ended a little bit messy, the All Out War that was like the only way it could end mm-hmm. in some ways. And I'm glad they kept Negan around because you know he he not dead. But yeah, good stuff. Judith's a great character. I didn't hate Daryl as much this year as I do most years. He got a little bit better in season eight. Only a little bit. Still not my favorite, but yeah, Walking Dead. It's it's still it's it's an okay show. I haven't finished the first half of it. I don't know. I think I might. I don't know if I will watch the rest of it, but I will definitely watch it once it comes to Netflix. Yeah, because I watched up until when Rick left, and I feel like it's a good stopping point if you want to, you know, not keep up every week. Yeah, it is. It is. But a, I, I it will is a say like a stopping it, point. it's. You know, they have made some good changes, for yeah. sure. 
And it sounds like this whole like whisperer stuff is. Kind it's of... it's actually like the the what happens in the mid season finale is actually I'm like, Ooh. whoa, that's all right. Like not even like uh like who anybody who what are you doing to me, cat? Not even anybody who uh like dies or anything like that. Just also just the way that it like there's just a certain s- scene towards the end of the episode that I'm like, oh, Ooh. like. It's like I did, it's like I should have seen that coming, but I'm like, well, that's cool. Yeah, some, some cool stuff. What is your problem? <laughs> I have no clue. cats going nuts down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, for me, number five, I have Lost in Space. Oh yeah, fuck, I want to watch it. See, there's another show. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Uh, I. Not a whole lot of people are talking about this show as like one of the best shows of the year. But I just fucking loved it. I, I loved watching every second of it. Uh, because I, I'm very much into <coughs> like sci-fi stuff. I love Toby Stevens, I think his name is, as an actor. I mean, he he was in um, Black Sails. He was fucking incredible in it. And he's he's good in this one as well. The whole cast is pretty well done. The um, So, you know, they shit goes south. There's this robot. It's a remake of Lost in Space. Yeah. But now it's a TV show. But, uh, you know. Big robot guy, Danger Will Robinson, and shit happens. They land on this planet that they're not supposed to be on. And the visuals are really well done for being a TV show. I mean, Netflix clearly threw a lot of money into this show. And, uh, yeah, I just thought it had enjoyable characters, enjoyable moments, enjoyable episodes, and a very uh, intense season finale, which I liked. Leading into season two. So, yeah, that's what I have. Um, yeah. You can do number, four. number four, I have season two of a series of unfortunate events. Uh, I just liked it because uh, it, that, that show has a style that I don't, that, that no other show really has in a lot of it. And it also, like, they throw, like, a lot of semi big name actors at you, like, all the time. I mean, first off, you know, they got Neil Patrick Harris, they got Patrick Warburton, they've got fucking Nathan Fillion's in that show, and just, like, a bunch of other people like that. And I'm like, whoa yeah but like this is sort of where the the books kind of stop getting less formulaic from what i remember and they kind of get a little bit more like there's an overarching story in a lot of ways and these are getting into some of the books like basically i knew most of the books from the first season i'm like okay i know what happens in these books i'm like i don't remember what happens i don't remember what happens in any of these and i think they got a good the, the actors they got playing the kids they're good uh, I just yeah, it's it's a it's just a it's a good show, mm-hmm. and uh, it's like also like one of the strangest visually like visually one of the strangest shows. It's just like it the style, like play. yeah, and like and also the style is just so slightly absurdist. It's like yeah, it's kind of just like everything's you know blown up, but it's like oh well, yeah, I mean that's not not too far off of how things are sometimes. So I'm like oof, yeah, but. It fits the show. It really does. It's a, it's a good show. I enjoyed sex season. January 1st. Woohoo. Third one. Number four, I have American Crime Story. The assassination of Gianni Versace. Uh, so this is the second American Crime Story. It's like FX's American Horror Story. Except they pick like real things and tell the story of it. But uh, not in like any documentary form. Like it's an actual fucking show. And um, this one is about Gianni Versace, who was assassinated. He was a very, very uh, great and influential fashion designer, apparently. And this just crazy fucking guy ended up killing him along with many other guys. And what I thought is well done about the show. One, the acting is incredible. Darren Chris, who plays Andrew, blanking on his name, is the serial killer. Unfucking believable. One of my favorite performances I've ever seen, uh, movie or film. Just incredible. And two, I didn't like it watching week to week. But the more that I thought about it, the more I'm like, it's genius. They told the story backwards. Oh. Okay. So it starts off with him. Well, they they almost told it backwards, but it starts off with him killing Gianni Versace so it's not really about Gianni Versace himself but it's about uh, 
you know, his his serial killer that just went downhill. So you see what happens here, and then you go backwards to where he's a little bit more normal. Okay. And, like, so the, you know, a little bit of spoilers, but, you know, the second to last episode, he's kind of a normal guy. And then you see what happens in the season finale, you know, and it's like, it kind of hits you a little bit of like, man, he was he was a normal guy. He just needed maybe needed some help or whatever. But there's some really incredible stories in there, and they 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 did like most things do. They twisted a few things, but they were pretty pretty true to a lot of events of it. So, yeah. Number three, I have Jessica Jones season two. I think I, Jessica Jones I really like because. It does not play it safe, like at all, with a lot of the stuff that they try to do. I mean, at the end of you know the season, I mean you know minor minor spoil. At the end of the season, like Jessica's life is just kind of turned completely upside down by the whole events. And I, and I I know a lot of people don't like this. I like the fact that there wasn't like a a villain per se. There wasn't a traditional villain in the show. And I just thought that Kristen Ritter did uh, you know did a phenomenal job throughout the season you know they you know uh david Tennant for the one episode that they bring him back he's great uh let me pull up some of the other actors but like i thought they did really great things kind of fleshing out characters like like trish and malcolm who were great characters from season one but now like they're even more fleshed out you find out about trish's backstory and so we're about her drug problems and then mm. you, stuff with malcolm and malcolm's trying to stretch out on like his own and do things like that it's I liked it a lot. I thought I thought I thought it was very very well done. I know a lot of people are sort of don't like the like the 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 whole thing with with the villain and whatnot. But I like just diving into Jessica's backstory and all that cool stuff. It was a lot, it, it was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. It's easily the I think definitely in the top half of probably one of my top four Marvel seasons of Marvel TV like ever. Yeah. I thought it was good. Uh, it's just nowhere near the first season. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. Just David Tennant's just so fucking good in that first season. That's hard to live up to that. But it was an interesting story to me. Yeah. Um, so, at number three, I have Sharp Objects. Uh, this is a, what do they call it, a limited series on HBO. Basically, okay. it's it's just a season. That's it. Okay. Um, so, this is based off of a book. I believe the book's called Sharp Objects as well. And uh, it's Amy Adams, uh, Patricia, Patricia Clarkson uh, plays her mom as well. And, and it's basically her, Amy Adams is a journalist. She has to go, she's assigned this uh, murder story, but this ends up being in her hometown, uh, which then you really get into her backstory and uh her issues, her mm-hmm. self harm issues, her you know, problems like that, her sisters, and all sorts of stuff. It also has um, the chick who played. She was in the eight. Oh, uh, you know the, I'm talking the, about the redhead yeah, Beverly. Yeah, like, well, I don't know so her she's name is. in that. She plays a younger Amy Adams. She's fantastic in it, um, which is why they should have got Amy Adams for it chapter two. But whatever. Uh, Who'd they get? Jessica Chastain? Yeah. I mean, she's cool. Yeah. But I just feel like they these two look so much alike that it was, like, fucking perfect. Anyways, uh, it, it, it ends up being a really well-told story. Very uh, true detective, the first season, like, of, like, not only are the characters really well-written, there there is some sort of mystery to it, but, like, the setting is its own character in itself. It's set in, like, deep... What is it? Deep Louisiana, I think? No. Um, God, I hate, I hate that I'm fucking this up. Missouri? It's a, it, it's a, it's a country it's a, it's that... Deep South. Yeah. I'm going to look this up while you're going, just because this is bothering me. Uh, but anyways, it's a, it's a great fucking show. Yeah. My number two. Uh, it's not as good as the first season, but I still think it was really good, and I have American Vandal season two. I binge-watched all of American Vandal, like, a month ago. Maybe not even that. And... I think season two is probably the best follow-up you could have gotten to season one of that show. It gets super meta with, like, in the first episode, they're talking about getting a Netflix deal and making yeah. the first season sound better. The one dude, uh, 
the one basketball player, I forget mm. what his name is, but he's good. Yo, Netflix! And I'm like, all right, that's pretty funny. But, like, it, it touches on, like, real issues. Like, the first se- season talks touches on, like, the issues of, like, like of, of what a documentary series is supposed to be and, you know, the impact and kind of that. And this one kind of more just talks about online pers- your online persona and cyberbullying and things like that and it's it's a really cool it's a really cool show i mean the thing that sells me was like the first episode i think the first episode is really really well done it's fucking awesome like you just go through the whole thing well okay well i'll get to that later but yeah, yeah the first, first episode's really well incredible done. and i was genuinely surprised when it got to like after watching the first season i was like okay it's gonna kind of come out of nowhere probably it's probably gonna follow some other thing it's gonna come out of nowhere what, what you know who is responsible and it did to an extent but it's also like oh that actually really caught me off guard like when it's revealed who was responsible for the brownout and you know all the other events the t-shirt can and thing i'm like wow they that's really well done mm-hmm. good job so too bad i got this one got canceled right. um when gap missouri missouri true detective set in louisiana that's what i was thinking of got him flip flop number two i have a uh, better call saul the season was excellent. Uh, the season was slow. It was very subdued, but it did that on purpose, and it was just perfectly crafted. Yet again, from Vince Gillian and, and you know the writers and actors and actresses on this show, it's just it's unbelievable how much detail is in literally everything. This is by far the best prequel thing I have ever fucking seen in my life. Because it's making Breaking Bad better. Okay. Knowing all of this stuff to me. And, and, and they're not, like, super on the nose about everything. It's just, it's so fucking good. And that, yeah, I'll get to more of it later. But excellent, excellent fucking season. I'm going to take a wild guess and assume that we both have the same thing for number one. Yeah. So I'm going to say number one, I have Daredevil. Me too. So Daredevil season three is one of the best seasons of TV I've seen in a long time. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that, I mean, what, it had both seasons of Daredevil, which are, again, two of the best ones. And The Defenders, not as good, but a lot of story there, especially for Daredevil. And it kind of lived up to to all that. It kind of lived up to all the hype you you could have expected for it. And I think the, the main thing, which sets this up, like basically above just about every other Marvel Netflix season ever, is that there's not really like a dipping point. There's not like a lull. You know, usually every season has like a couple episodes, like seven, eight, where it's just like it's it it, it just kind of plummets. It hits, yeah. it gets slow, and and it didn't really happen this time. They did a good job. They introduced new characters and actually made you sort of care about the characters with, like, uh, was it Nadim? Yep. Yep. He was great. And, I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio, he's he's, he's incredible. He's awesome. So was uh, the dude who plays Bullseye. I thought he did a very, very good job, too. And it's just, everybody was on their A game. And it was such a cool, uh, compelling narrative the whole way through. It, it was It was super nice. I liked it a lot. I also just because I just personally like it, I like the return to the to the black like ninja outfit. Me too. More. I, I just I, I I like the Daredevil outfit, yeah. but like that one just looks so much more badass. It does, and I, I I've seen legitimate criticisms of this season because he never wears the, the Daredevil. Costume. I think it makes I'm perfect like, sense I think why it's he would. Fucking great. I think it's the very legitimate reason why yeah, he wouldn't. Hundred percent. I loved this season a lot. And, and like you said, it doesn't really slow down at all, you know, over 13 episodes, which these Netflix Marvel shows usually have at least some sort of dip in it, in the middle, you know, maybe. Yeah. Or in the beginning sometimes as well. Uh, but it was just so thrilling to watch their relationships with all the characters, um, especially between Matt Foggy and Karen was fantastic. I think Foggy is fucking incredible in this yeah, show. Yeah, he's great. Um Karen, I I think Karen's well done. Uh, I don't think they should have spent that much time on their back on her backstory. I, it it worked, it worked for yeah. what they wanted to tell. I just think it might have been a little too long. Like I like how they did Bullseye's backstory. Yeah, like that dominated that episode for the most part, but it wasn't the entire thing. Where I mean, not that Karen's episode was. Uh, it's just 
I mean, it was. I just also. All the 10 I, minutes. I almost. I, I thought it was a little weird too because I just. I more associate her with the Punisher anymore. So I was like, hmm. you could have done this in the Punisher, and that would have fit a little bit more because yeah. you know. But. But it's good, and in, in you know. Kingpin being Kingpin, I thought the way he manipulates everything, you kind of have to put it aside a little bit of how is this one guy manipulating the entire FBI. Like, I don't know. once you put that aside and you go, oh, that dude's doing a lot of crazy shit. You know, you never he he you he always feels one step ahead of everybody. Yeah. You know that then that is pretty good. But I just think of that that finale, which we'll get to more in a second, but yeah. It's just, it's awesome. It was incredible to have Daredevil back. That that was one of my first thoughts watching again. I'm like, it's been way too fucking long, and now we will never get any more. Nope. Or at least him in in this show. It again, sucks. Because like I guess he can show up in other things if it's like Netflix. But then once all these shows are canceled, he can't. They can't do anything with the characters for two years, which yeah. sucks. So Charlie Cox said he was very excited for season four. With what they were talking about doing, and yeah. Apparently the pitch was like, at, apparently the pitch was very good. It's just that Netflix just didn't want to play ball. Yeah, I guess they just don't want to use Disney's properties when Disney is creating a rival streaming service. Also, they're taking, they're you know, they're ta- they're kind of almost going back on this deal and taking all their stuff away here soon to go on the Disney service. Like all the Disney yeah, movies are going to come true. off Netflix. Yeah, maybe uh, that's one thing too. It, with, like all those Disney movies are coming off of Netflix, which is huge for Netflix to have. Yeah. So then Netflix is like, well, we don't want to have any of our shit on our service. If yeah. you're just not, if you're not going to help us, we're not going to help you. Yeah. So it just, it sucks. And it, it sucks because Daredevil is not a show that would exist on Disney plus. No. You know. Unless like Unless they put it on Hulu. Unless they put it on like Hulu where they did something else with it. I mean, it wouldn't the only character that at least with a two year thing might not happen with is is Punisher, and that's because he kinda came but that show came about after all the mm-hmm. initial contracting stuff. So who knows? Punisher movie, twenty twenty. Probably not. But Yeah. Daredevil's certainly my favorite thing that I watched this year. Yeah. Uh, episodes run down these. Uh, well honorable mentions for me in T V shows. Castle Rock, Altered Carbon, Westworld. They're all very good. For sure. Yeah. Episodes. Episodes. My number five, I have What Comes After from season eight of The Walking Dead, mm. which is essentially Rick's final episode. Yeah, that was done. On my list. That was very, very, very well done. I think that, you know, the whole him surviving thing so that they could do movies, didn't expect that, and that's fine. But, um,. I thought bringing back all of the all of the characters was cool. Like Shane coming back was awesome. Herschel, Sasha, that was all great. And I thought they it told a uh, a really good story. And it's one of those weird things where like those uh, those moments with Rick catapult that episode, you know, to being one of the best episodes of that show ever. But then even the stuff in the background, like the stuff between Maggie and Negan, is like super awesome. What they did with that and some of the and, you know some of the other moments with like involving like Carol and the saviors who kind of go rogue like it's just a lot of good stuff there it just kind of came to be just a, like a perfect episode i was a little worried for a bit because i was like watching it and i'm like man this is gonna get weird because he's going back to he's going back to atlanta i'm like what and then i'm like oh okay yeah it's all just a hallucination I'm like that makes sense okay yeah, yeah it was really well done it's on my list as well at number four um, I, it's one of the best episodes of The Walking Dead. Yeah. Period. You know, they, they really did it right. At first it started with, um, Jadis, I believe. That's her name, right? Yeah. The trash woman. And I'm like, are you serious? It's Rick's final episode and you're going to concentrate on this stupid motherfucker? It makes sense at the end, obviously. It gives, like, okay, but, fine. But I'm like, oh, God, they're doing the Walking Dead thing of, like, this cool thing's happening, but let's concentrate on this character that no one gives a shit about, mm-hmm. which they did a lot about, did, have done a lot over the past two or three seasons. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's good. All right, number five, I have uh, Falling from Sharp Objects. Uh, this is the second to last episode, and uh, I... I think it's really well done because you kind of know then what happened, who killed who, with an asterisk on that. Um, 
but just the acting is just well done. The directing is incredible. Like, uh, and you see what Adora, who's Amy Adams' mother, is doing to her own child, uh, and, and that she is uh, is kind of mentally fucked up. And it, it's one of those episodes where it just kind of cuts to the credits, and I actually kind of got chills. I was like, oh, oh, this is really just fucked up. Like what's happening and. Uh, my number four, I have, pull back up, I mean, I know what it is, it's the brownout from uh, the first episode of it's good. the American Vandal season two. I love just the setup of this episode with, like, the recorded police interview with, uh, oh, I should bring this up because I don't remember the character, the, the main, the character, in a way, who's like the victim. Let me pull it. I, oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I forget. The, the like, nerdy, uh, the, the fruit ninja guy. Yeah, the fruit ninja yeah. dude. Like, uh, like all that Kevin. whole thing. Yeah, it's Kevin. That's what it is. Um, and they do all that stuff, and there's, uh, you know, and you kind of go through the whole thing, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's he did it. It was him. Uh, and I think the, the, the part of the episode <laughs> that really got to me, and it's my favorite part of the entire episode, was uh, is the very end when his grandmother's talking and she's like, "If my grandson Kevin did this, why did he shit his Why did he shit his own pants?" And then I literally, my, my I'm not, not even exaggerating. My literal reaction at the end of that was just, "What?" <laughs> <I know. laughs> I'm just funny. like, like they, they did it because like they, they did something sort of similar with the first episode of the first season, but I thought this one was just so much better because it's like, oh, you know, you, you kind of pulls back the curtain on like a lot of things and you're introduced to characters early I'm like who are these people and it's like I just thought it was just really well done yeah it's, it's the one of the better episodes and one of the most one of the most shocking especially the the actual like brown out that's one of the most like I did not expect that I'm like like I knew what happened but then there's like, it's kind of graphic to look at I'm like yeah. oh alright oh man it is <laughs> uh, number four I had what comes after from The Walking Dead so uh, number three I have uh, one one last shot, which is the second... Oh, right, I'm on the other fucking thing. All right, which is the second to last episode of Daredevil Season 3. Mm-hmm. I, I really like this episode because there's because uh, of almost the, the cat and mouse sort of nature of it. You know, uh, they set up the whole plan to get uh, Nadim to testify against Wilson Fisk, mm-hmm. and they do this. And I love the whole sequence with him and Matt. When like they're going in like the uh, the police or the the back of the the van, and he's like telling him, "Okay, shoot right here," and he's like to shooting at people and just kind of maneuvering about. I just really like that whole thing with it, and then also like because it's the only thing. Because I noticed it was very similar to Daredevil season one in this aspect, in which it's like, "Oh yeah, they're gonna get him." You kind of think they're gonna get Fisk, and then right at the last minute, it's like, "I guess not." Yeah. Uh, and then w- what they did and how like they they kind of set up. Uh, Nadim's sort of like redemption arc in some ways at the end of the episode with I mean he gets killed I thought was very very well done I was very surprised I was surprised that I would care as much about his character by that point in the in in the season mm-hmm. that I did and I, I just I just kind of love the whole thing like the Karen Foggy and uh, Matt all kind of back together temporarily and then Matt's kind of like it's not going to work I and he's kind of like grappling with whether or not he's going to have to kill uh, Kingpin again, like he was planning on earlier in the season. It was mm. just very well done, very very well done. Yeah. Uh, number three, I have the Riddle of the Sphinx. Uh, this is from Westworld. Um, this is the fourth episode, and, and this episode was very riveting to watch um, because there's there's three distinct stories in it, but uh, two of them really stand out to me, and that's uh, just one. Um, you have uh, Jim. Uh, Delos, I believe, who you, you learn about how he buys into the park and all this stuff, and then you also learn about other things that they're doing at the park uh, without spoiling too much, and you kind of go, oh, okay, this is crazy, and then you you learn about what happened to him in the past, and it gets into this the whole timeline thing that Westworld has going on. Uh, but then there's also the other story that I really like with Bernard and Elise and discovering major things about Westworld and what it is. It's It was one of those episodes 
where Westworld does what Westworld is great at, and that is the mystery of everything, uh, which season one was incredible with. Season two was good, but not not as riveting. Um, it, like they, they're just very good at doing that stuff, and and it was just a classic Westworld episode to me. So, ah, uh, so for number two, I have. AKA Playland, which is the season finale of Jessica Jones season two. Uh, I just kind of love again because, I, like I said, I, I like the the whole setup with uh, her and her mom in this episode, and I, to to me, it's kind of how the episode comes to a close and like the events that lead up to there. So like they help like a car accident, they help with like a car accident, and they're doing the good thing, and her mom's like, yeah, I, I can I can do the right thing, but then uh, eventually. They, uh, you know, they end up at like a like a carnival, and they're on the Ferris wheel. And it's a sort of like very touching moment where she's like, "Look, you can go. They're gonna come kill me." And then and then Trish kills her mom, and I'm like, and then everything's fucked after that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like I just kind of like that's that that dynamic that the show kind of went to at that point because. You know, again, like like I had mentioned earlier when I was talking about the season, that they just kind of up upended everything about Jessica Jones, which leaves season three in like such a just a weird state of flux. Where I'm like, I don't even know where they're gonna go, what's gonna happen with it, but like it left me genuinely excited for it, and I like the stuff that they're doing with Trish. I like kind of they're doing with Malcolm and like all the characters. I think it's just, I think that this is just a very for a very weird and kind of polarizing season, I think that this was probably the best end that this season could have had. And mostly because of that moment. And I'm like, mm. wow. Some great acting and just great great everything. I uh, love this episode. Yeah. Uh, number two, I have a new napkin from Daredevil. Which is my number one. So This is the uh, season three finale. The series finale, I guess you could call it now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's an incredible, incredible fucking episode. Yeah. Uh, one, you know, Kingpin's getting married to Vanessa. You know, the love of his life, Vanessa. And that is very, you know, like, oh, okay, interesting. You know, he's kind of getting his way. Um, and then, really, it's the ending. Um, the ending is just fucking incredible. The fight between him and Bullseye. And uh, Kingpin is just well done. And then, you know, right at the end, you know, Daredevil's just, like, screaming in his face of, like, I beat you, the city beat you, and I will always beat you sort of thing. It's like, wow. Like, that's the moment I always think about. That was so perfectly acted and written. Um, Charlie Cox just knocked it out of the park at that moment. And then also, you know, at the whole wedding uh, you know, there's the whole the whole Nadine video comes out, and then Bullseye comes out of nowhere. He's just murdering the fucking shit out of everybody. It's like, it, it's a really well done episode, and uh, you know, definitely goes out on a high note. And then the, the ending with uh, Karen Foggy, Matt back together. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I think that I I agree with like everything you said. I love the three way fight at the end. I think that's probably one of the best choreographed fights but also because like it it, it lacks the spectacle which the season had earlier with like that 10 minute long like fight scene with a dialogue yes with with that dot which is probably the maybe one of the single best single moments of the season but like the fight scene was done so well especially like you almost like you cringe especially when like kingpin like breaks bull's eyes back and you're just like oh no but then like yeah, I think, you know, the, the again, kind of piggybacking off what I said about the previous episode, you know, the stuff that they did with Nadim, I thought was good with, like, how they kind of outsmart Kingpin in the end and just all kinds of other fun stuff. And it's it's nice. I, I, I like that it does end on a high note and that everything kind of gets wrapped up. I, one of the reasons I was hoping, again, for a season four was, like, they kind of, like, they addressed everything except for Matt being Daredevil about what goes forward with that. Mm-hmm. That was like the only thing they didn't address after that. And I'm like, oh, let's see where they go from here. And then, you know, it's not going to happen now. But, you know, who knows? With with Karen being tight, so closely entwined with the Punisher, maybe they'll show up in the Punisher? Who knows? I doubt it. I can keep my hopes up. I probably shouldn't. 
but I will anyway. But yeah, it's be- in my opinion, best episode of like TV of the year. Yeah. Uh, for me, I have the season finale to Better Call Saul. It's called Winner. Uh, and, and that episode is, uh, once again, one of those just, like, you kind of watch it and you go, man, you know, when it was slow, not a tremendous amount of happened, but the impact on everything that, that happens in that episode is just fucking incredible. And in the very end, I'm not going to spoil it, but the very end of it is just so incredibly well done. Um, like uh, to the point where I got up and I was like, like, holy shit, because it's getting, it's very much getting to that breaking bad point. Um, and then there was also just some, you know, with, with Mike and Werner, uh, yeah, that's the dude's name, Werner, uh, which was a very touching story, uh, that, uh, and that ended very poorly in a way, um, in that episode. And it's just, the, the whole thing is just expertly, expertly put together. So that's my favorite episode of the year. All right. It's good shit. A lot of good TV. Got a lot of good TV this year. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff, like like I said in the beginning of the video, there's a lot of stuff that I wish I would have watched. Uh, I need to finish Breaking Bad so that I can watch Better Call Saul because it's like it's been like near the top of your list in like every category every year since you started watching. It. So I'm I like, love the show. So I'm like, it's... so I'm like, fuck. I need to. I need. I need to get yeah. all caught up. Like when Better Call Saul is done, if it continues how it's going, you can make the argument that it's better than Breaking Bad. It's a totally different show, and you need to set your expectations for that. But it's it's just deliberate in everything that it does. Every shot, every act, you know, every piece of acting, every line, everything is so thought through that it's just it's perfect. So, yeah. Uh, shout out to American Crime Story with the episode House by the Lake. That one's tits. And shout out to Luke Cage, the main ingredient with Danny Rand. That's a great episode. That was a fun episode to watch. Also, I'll put out there, shout out to the the season finale of of Iron Fist Season 2. I thought that was a really good episode as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely definitely got me excited for a Season 3 and then only for those hopes to get ripped out. Shout out to the very first episode of Castle Rock, which is also excellent Castle Rock would have made my list, but it 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 falls on its face at the end, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Which just, just kind of sucked. But there, there was some good stuff in it. Anyways, let us know your favorite TV shows and episodes. Thanks for watching. Yeah. See ya.